100 thou to level it and start over. <laughs> Not only did our new house have a leaky roof, rotten floorboards under the linoleum, and a furnace that actually blew up every few weeks, it also had an extended family of what I thought were mammoth rats. In all honesty, they were mostly mice, but they were hefty mice. They had raucous parties in their apartments, which were between the walls of all, all over our house. There was a very professionally chewed doorway beneath the bottom shelf of the pantry that must have been used at, at mealtimes. I'm sure that they would look forward to coming inside after a long, hard day of teasing my cat out in the field. Yes, we did have a cat, though she never caught a mouse on purpose. Once, she did manage to bring her paw down upon one. But then she lifted her paw up so she could bat the mouse with the other paw, as she did with her catnip toy. But the mouse scurried away, naturally. For the rest of the day, my dull cat contemplated the mysteries of life with a confused expression on her face, occasionally lifting her right paw to see whether or not she caught another one yet. <laughs> anyway, I, I imagined the mice perusing the shelves each night in the pantry, discussing among themselves what they would eat, doing a, a, a tiny paper rock scissors with their paws in order to decide who would chew the openings in the bottom corners of my cereal boxes. Then a macho mouse would shimmy up between the cellophane and the inside of the box to impress the others with a perfectly executed swan dive into the Cheerios or cornflakes. He would proceed to throw flakes or crackers or rice grains to his adoring fans waiting below. I tried everything to keep these mice out of the house. My most foolish attempt began by reading an article in a humanitarian, vegetarian, organic magazine <laughs> that suggested you could thwart a rodent infestation with toothpaste. The article said to fill up their entrance hole with ordinary, non-toxic, cruelty-free toothpaste. When, I dry, when it dried, I was to sand it, paint it over, and that would be the end of the mice. It didn't work that way. To get an idea of what happened, imagine coming home one day to find that your front door was somehow been, had somehow been replaced with a wall of cakes and cookies and candy and chocolate eclairs or whatever your personal favorite dessert is. That must have been what it was like for the mice. <laughs> Thoughts about how they had been blessed by their mouse god's very paw must have <laughs> passed through their minds as they ate every little bit of that tasty toothpaste. <laughs> There are a great variety of solutions for a mouse problem at the hardware store. First, of course, is the standard spring snap trap. I read the package to know how to set the spring and how the mice mouse would die when the spring was released onto its thieving neck. After setting it, it wasn't long before I heard the spring release and the snap, and then a terrible mousy squeal. It was such a horrific sound that the carton drawing on the trap package of the mouse with the X's on his eyeballs was replaced in my mind with a wide-eyed creature suffering its torturous death. I ran to the pantry in a panic, but the trap was empty of mouse and empty of bait as well. I was left to think that the sound I'd heard wasn't a scream of pain, but a squeal of mouse delight. Whee! Free food! Next, I tried one of those sticky pads that is supposed to hold tight to the mouse's feet uh, until you can get there with some kind of a club and hit it. Of course, whatever you use as a club better not be anything you want to use again because it ha would have a dead mouse under a sticky pad permanently attached to it. That didn't last long. The first mouse that came to investigate must have decided to use his tail to test out this new and curious item on the pantry floor. A little while after I'd set the pad and with the bait in the middle, I heard a scraping sound. I caught sight, sight of this Mensa mouse running with the pad stuck to the very end of his tail. <laughs> he ran into the tunnel and the pad tipped up on its end, covering the mouse hole. It wiggled and shook for a minute, probably while he trimmed the hairs of his tail in order to release it from the pad, and then the pad was still. The pad was over the mouse hole, though, and so I thought, well, okay, I didn't get the mouse, but the pad is stuck there, and that will stop them from coming in. <laughs> ha! I won, I thought. The next morning, however, there was a bigger doorway chewed right next to the pad-covered one, and food was again missing from the pantry shelves. 
I tried a kind of trap that looked like a tiny little backyard gazebo called Maxie Mouse's Poison Pavilion, really. <laughs> but my mice were not fooled. I tried tempting them with a jar-like thing, with a spiked door that was supposed to shut on them, but my mice ignored it. I was suckered into buying all the newest models of mouse traps, designed to pierce, explode, or dehydrate a mouse, but my mice were far too clever. At that point, I decided that the house was inhabited by a family of mice which must have escaped from a scientific laboratory where a chemical formula that increases intelligence was being tested. I made note to research where this laboratory was so that I could be the first human volunteer. I became convinced that these mice were conspiring against us. I could hear them in the night laughing at us from behind the walls. I declared war and went to Agway. The salesman told me about have a heart trap. The idea being that you catch them and let them go somewhere else. Well, having left behind all pacifist thought, I asked if there was a have a revenge trap instead. <laughs> <laughs> he must have recognized the crazed killer look in my eye. So he confessed that farmers used the have a heart trap to catch the pest and then they would submerge it into a pond. Sold. It was with glee, I do admit that I set the bait in my trap that night. Peanut butter rolled in oatmeal would do the trick, the salesman said. By morning, I would have the advantage in our war of the pantry. I slept soundly that night, dreaming of quiet walls and a bowl of Rice Krispies without little black crunchies. <laughs> when the alarm woke me in the morning, my thoughts went to the battlefield. I ran to the pantry to see if my offensive maneuvers had been successful. Yes. The trap was occupied. I bent down on my hands and knees to consider my enemy face to face. Perhaps I would gloat, maybe I would just glare. But oh, I hadn't expected him to be so small. <laughs> With such moist-eyed, sinless face, twitching at me from behind the bars of his death chamber. This mouse, I rationalized, could not have been part of the havoc that had been wrought in my country for months. <laughs> This mouse, I decided, was just an innocent victim caught in the crossfire and would have to be set free. <laughs> I made plan to let him go at the abandoned farm at the bottom of our hill on my way by that morning. I gave the mouse a Ritz cracker while I ate my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it is significant to the story to tell you that I cooked two toaster waffles that morning, and they were not very good, for they'd been in the freezer too long. So having only eaten one, I put the other textured circle, untouched, on the top of the nearly full compost bin by the sink. I got dressed as the snow began to fall outside. When I was ready for work, I put some newspapers on a tray so that I could carry the mouse and my compost bin. I would stop first at the compost pile beside the garage, and then at the abandoned barn at the bottom of the hill. At the car, I put the tray onto the floor in, the front, in front on the passenger side, and as I scraped the ice and snow from the windows, I kept checking on the mouse. Well, 30 minutes later, I was in a suburban neighborhood at the school where I was working that day with a pile of rotting food and a live rodent in my car. I had forgotten to make my stops. I didn't think that I should uh, let my mouse out right there because he certainly might be caught in a trap of someone who didn't know him. <laughs> so I pulled out some mouse edible food from the compost bin and squeezed it into the have a ride in the car trap. <laughs> Laughing away my long struggle to kill this mouse, I hoped he wouldn't smother as I tucked the car blanket around the sides of his cage so he wouldn't freeze. <laughs> <laughs> my work that day was canceled at around noon because of the snowstorm and I was only too glad to get back in my car and head home. It was bad weather by that time, so the going was tough. Finally, though, I was out near where I would turn off the highway onto my street, but the traffic was stopped in front of me. Just our luck, huh, Mousy? I said. He answered with a soft, concerned sound. There had been an accident, and I was told that it would be quite a while before the cars could pass through that way. The weather was worsening with every passing moment, and I just wanted to be home in front of the fireplace. What do you think, Mousy? Take the back way? I asked. He was wiggling his nose at me with a definitive look. The back way went over the mountain, which was shorter but steeper. We decided to brave it.